nic tylko płakać, nic tylko się smucić. The earth trembled as Poland witnessed its worst flood in a hundred years. Rivers overflowed their banks, spilling into the streets, homes, and the lives of millions, bringing in an entire nation to a halt to reconsider the unfathomable power of nature. Houses were swept away, neighborhoods submerged under water, and the despairing gazes of the citizens shocked the international community. Is this the might of the Creator? A message for mankind to reflect on their wrongdoings against Mother Nature? Poland, a country located in the heart of Europe, has experienced many natural disasters, but the floods of 2020 have left a profound imprint on the minds of the people. Dubbed the country of rivers, Poland has a rich network of waterways, but it was these very rivers that became the source of chaos and grief. <laughs> The spring of 2020 began with the relentless rains that did not cease. The water level of the Vistula River, the country's longest river, started to rise from the end of April, raising concerns among meteorologists and hydrologists. By May, the rains not only continued, but also intensified, causing river levels to rise dramatically, signaling an impending disaster. The situation worsened as water reservoirs began to fill up and could no longer accommodate more rainfall. Dams and dike systems started to face significant pressure. <laughs> In Krakow, one could witness the spectacle of water from the Vistula River overflowing into the lower areas, flooding basements and creating large ponds in the middle of streets. Homes by the river, once peaceful and serene, are now nothing but ruins. The flood water penetrated every crevice, destroying foundations, sweeping away furniture and devastating the daily lives of the residents. Cars that were neatly parked in garages or by the roadside became toys for the raging waters, mercilessly pushed around, colliding and ultimately sinking to the river's bottom or getting stuck in the mud. The country's infrastructure was not designed to withstand such heavy rainfall. Streets turned into rivers, culverts were blocked and the drainage system was overwhelmed by the deluge.
Neighborhoods once bustling are now submerged underwater. Stores, schools, and hospitals, the community's hub, are now inaccessible. The population had to evacuate urgently, taking whatever they could in a state of panic and fear. Children, the elderly, and pets were prioritized for rescue, but not everyone was fortunate enough to escape the floodwaters safely. Meanwhile, in Warsaw, preparations to combat the flood were deployed urgently. Sandbags were stacked to reinforce the riverbanks and thousands of people were evacuated to safer places. However, despite the preparations, the power of nature rendered many defensive measures ineffective. The rural areas were no luckier. Floodwaters swept away or damaged thousands of hectares of crops. Infrastructures such as roads, bridges, and electrical systems also suffered severe damage. The sight of roads suddenly turning into rivers or cars being swept away became a familiar image throughout the natural disaster. Not only material possessions, but also the spirit of the Polish people were severely affected. Many lost their homes and years of accumulated possessions. The Polish government and international organizations had to deploy a range of emergency measures to assist those affected. Donation and support campaigns were launched throughout the country and from around the world. Rescue workers, volunteers and military worked tirelessly to provide food, temporary shelter and medical care to those in need. The disaster in Poland has taught us costly lessons, but what can humanity do to prevent or at least minimize the impact of these natural disasters? And looking into the future, the most crucial question may not be, will this happen again, but rather, how will we prepare when it does? The natural disaster in Poland has reminded many of the biblical stories of God's wrath. In those ancient texts, the Great Flood was not just a punishment, but also a warning about the necessity of living righteously and respecting sacred principles. However, instead of viewing modern natural events through a mythological lens, we should see them as a result of human actions. Over-exploitation and unsustainable practices have led to serious consequences. We must recognize that protecting nature is not only a responsibility, but also a form of self-defense. Every time a natural disaster occurs, we are reminded that nature is not something that can be controlled or exploited without consequences. Land, water, air, everything around us is part of a complex ecosystem where every human action has repercussions. Therefore, to prevent the reoccurrence of similar disasters, we need to learn to live in harmony with nature, respect its limits, and adopt sustainable development practices. The question, how will we prepare, 
requires each individual and community to reflect and act responsibly, from building flood-resistant infrastructure to implementing measures to mitigate climate change. Please leave your discussion comments below the video comment section. Thank you very much for your keen interest, follow-up, and enthusiastic support. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. For now, we say goodbye and look forward to seeing you in our next videos. Wishing everyone a warm day with your family.